Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast that explores Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. So I'm looking at your phone, Mm -hmm. and I'm trying to figure out if that's a PDF that I sent you. It is. Why is it why is it breaking lines? Like I sent Jimmy this because it's because it's called PDF Expert. It breaks it down by your headings, subjects. No, but I mean like even like flows. Yeah, but like it's it's so like let's say you've got like a title Mm -hmm. at the top. Instead of scaling it down, it breaks the line so that you have two words one on top of the other. That's not how it is. Like in a normal PDF, it doesn't do that. No, no, but it's liquid uh, PDF. I don't like that. I love it. I want a, PD, I want a PDF to look the way it's supposed to look. Mm, I choose not to. Here, yeah. I can do it. Because you do it your way. That's right. You you do, it, oh, there you go. go. Yeah, see, that's how it's supposed that's to look. That's horrible. Yeah. I'm going to go back. Yeah. No, I, mean, I get it. Yeah. I get it. It's definitely more readable on your yeah. phone. Yeah. That's right. I just don't like it. I love it. I, I like things it. happening like the way that I plan for them to happen. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, did you plan for all the pushback you got from Thursday's episode with Nick? Oh, well, I just unplugged myself, so I can't even hear anything. But I can answer the questions uh, still. Hmm. Um, yeah, I did. I listen. You um, planned for all that? I I anticipated. You it. anticipated? I didn't, I didn't plan anything in response. I look. Um, I, you know that first. <laughs> well, one guy in particular was really, and he's a listener of the podcast. Was was really uh, unhappy with with how we uh, with how Nick and I talked about it. And uh, so, like, I would just say a couple of things to everybody. One, um, it's my podcast. My podcast. Podcast. That's right. It's our podcast. We can do what we want. Um, listen, I, I if you listen to the podcast, we, we didn't say some of the things that people are accusing us of saying, like, oh, just the CREC is just fanboys of Wilson. Like, that's I don't remember him Nick, ever saying that. And mm. I certainly didn't say that. Listen, we were in Acts 29 for years. So we know what it's like to be like pointed at and. You know, have people say things about us because our leader was a bit of a nutter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. like, and like, uh, we joined A29 in spite of Mark Driscoll, not because of it. I'm sure there are people that are in the CRC, not because of Doug Wilson. Um, and we're not, listen, this is just a podcast where we have conversations. I didn't bring Nick on because he's an expert on the CRC. I brought him on because he's a friend and a Presbyterian and we're just going to talk about stuff. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, is it possible we got stuff wrong? Sure. Absolutely. And if we did, point that out. But so far, I haven't really seen anything where like we were specifically told like, well, this was wrong in what you said, just that we were dumb and ignorant and didn't know you didn't know anything. So, uh, but yeah. And then you're cowtailing to big Eva. Yeah, of course I know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, 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 here's the thing. Um, I always love that accusation though. Yeah. yeah. Big Eva hate. Yeah. We're yeah. not, yeah, 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 we're not. Listen, John MacArthur is way more big Eva than than, us. In, than anybody we really follow. Yeah. Yeah. So like, stop. <laughs> what are we talking about? Here? <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing. Like Doug Wilson is, is a, is a, is a culture warrior, a theological warrior. Um, and I'm not using those in bad ways. Um, and so those people that are in his group tend to have a bit of that with them. They're like, Hey, listen, man, if you, you poke at us, we're going to poke you back. Like, you know, poke, poke, so, poke, poke, poke. yeah. So like, yeah, I figured, you know, they're going to, they're gonna some people are gonna be upset but uh okay yeah all right you know but i we just don't worry about it it's like if we're wrong i want to be i want to see where i'm wrong and uh you know we've had to apologize and take things back and and uh even nick made a clarification uh and he said hey listen let's let's add this in the show notes so that i can clarify something i don't Hmm. want anything to be misunderstood and uh, some people took it the wrong way so i'd like to clarify we're happy to do that Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. yeah sure especially when it's others making the mistake yeah when When it's me when it's me, I don't want to admit it. No, never admit. But when it's Nick, when it's Nick, mistake, we're fine. Like, let's say, yeah, yeah. You know, you know. Jimmy only, only, Jimmy only apologizes if he absolutely has to. Oh yes, because you know, absolutely. You I mean you might? I mean, you almost got your uh, your minority card revoked uh, for one thing. You, you, here's the thing: you can get the white card revoked, which nobody really wants, anyways. Mm. Or you can get the minority card revoked. It depends on. I mean, that white card works really well at traffic stops. Oh, you, yes, it does. But like, it's kind of hard to show your white card oh, at a yeah. traffic stop. Yeah, no, it's pretty yeah. hard. It's pretty hard. You have to pull uh, me out of your pocket. No, no, I got to talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you say? What do you say to an officer who pulls you over? Uh, how do you? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, mm. Uh, license and registration. Well, sir, one second, please, while I grab <laughs> my wallet from the dashboard. Where, where are you heading tonight, sir? I am heading to the country club. Where oh, I, which one? Geneva. Do you work there? 
No, sir. I am a member. <laughs> oh. Mm. Yes, mm. my family founded. Oh, really? Okay. Founded the foundation. Oh, oh that Fowler. That Fowler, yes. I'm so sorry, uh, sir. Mm. Well, listen, Can drive you, safe out there. Thank you. Can you please es- escort me? Uh, yes. Uh, listen, uh, I'll, let me get in front of you. Uh, don't worry about the stoplights. Just follow me. Thank you, officer. <laughs> That's how it works for me. Uh, I like it. I like it. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Well, we got, um, I don't know, somehow in the midst of this, we did get uh, some questions about your inconsistencies. Yeah. (laughs) I've got many, you know, I got many inconsistencies. So uh, we we did, um, we got a couple of uh, of emails. I'm just going to read one here and it's only part of it. And uh, I like it. These guys like, will like put a whole, there's a whole paragraph in this one. And then afterwards, he's like, yeah, don't include that because uh, that'll get somebody in trouble. So here we're picking up mm, <laughs> what, we're, what we're allowed to say. <laughs> ah, here you go. Okay, here we go. Uh, you oh, meant- by the way, oh, this is ahead. about music, worship music. And I had referenced that we sang a couple of Bethel songs every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. And, people, and some people were like, really? What's that all about? So well, I think, we- I think they, well, actually, I think he does reference that here, right? Yeah. About uh, the Wilson? No. No, that, 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 so some people had said, Hey, yeah, that's are you not later. inconsistent? You know? Yeah. That, that's Justin uh, said that on Twitter. Oh, okay. Okay. So you mentioned in a previous episode that a church member had expressed concerns with you singing particular worship songs written by culturally and biblically problematic churches. You said you told her why you don't feel that singing those songs is a bad thing. Can you do an episode mailbag about the reason behind why you are okay singing those songs in the corporate gathering? Maybe you could also air out some popular approaches to why or why not sing Elevation, Hillsong, Bethel, Mav City, etc. I'm thinking two approaches specifically. One, against singing the songs. Romans 14 airing on the side of the weaker brother, i.e. we can control Sunday morning. So why would we sing problematic songs and possibly cause people to stumble, even if it's only by name association? Two, for singing the songs, ancient popular hymn writers Horatio Spafford, it is well died as a universalist, or some, is that what you said? It is mm-hmm. well died, yeah. Uh, or some even denied the faith altogether. So why would we treat good theologically rich songs any different today? Aren't they useful for feeding our people a healthy worship diet? There you go. A couple of clarifications here. One, not a church member that brought this concern to us. Uh, Somebody visiting the church who likes the church quite a bit, but probably won't be able to join because of their own conscience. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know why you assumed it was a her. What's that all about? Well, that's that's why I paused. I was like, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. No, it's not a her. It was him. Mm. Yeah, man. Okay. First of all, don't assume gender. Mm. And uh, (laughs) what? I just mean don't assume it was him or her. I'm not saying don't don't assume any kind of gender. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, Mm -hmm. like, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. don't assume it was a woman. It was a dude. All right. So, yeah, cool, cool. Good uh, good stuff. So, when we're talking about the basis for what we sing at church, Jimmy, um, you know, we're not just picking songs that sound good or, like, fit the flow. Yeah, Like, yeah. we've got some basic criteria that we start to look for. Well, I think, first and foremost, we look at, is it biblical, right? Like, is mm-hmm. are the lyrics and what's being sung, are they reflective of right. the truth of Scripture? Yeah. I mean, they might be... They might just be scripture, yeah. Uh, or, they, but they at least have to reflect what you said—the truth of scripture. Yep, yep. So, like in terms of content, right? That's what you're talking about here, because there's and there's content and then there's form, right? Mm, or the content mm. and then the music. And so, if we're looking at the content end, it, you're saying it's like the starting line has got to be biblical. Okay, like that's the most foundational, absolute thing. We're not interested in it if it's not biblical. I mean, you got to ask by what standard. You do. And you do. it's the scriptural standard. Yeah. Um, so I also think, uh, did you get my joke? I just made a little face joke. At I, got okay. I got it. I got it. I got it. So I think if we're saying it's got to be reflective of scripture, that doesn't mean that it can't be creative. It doesn't mean that it, it can't be poetic and use words that are not found in scripture, but that it's communicating the truth of scripture. And that maybe that's where we want to funnel it down. So it's got to be biblical, mm-hmm. but it's also got to be theological. Mm. And by theological, I mean, in one sense, it needs to be God-centered, right? So it's it's not a, all about us, because you can be biblical yeah. and just sing about us and creation. But to say theological, I mean, well, it's it's got to see us and creation in the context of who God is, what God has done. Yeah. So it's got to be God-centered and instructive. So in other words, it, it's to say that it's theological gets to the issues of, 
the person of God, the work of God, uh, and then highlighting all of that in the gospel of God. So theological, biblical, theological, it like narrows it down even more, hmm. I think. And then even with that, though, like, because I, I, you and I, I think, have this same perspective. We, we want these songs. It's important that these songs that we choose to sing are biblical, reflecting yep. the scripture, yep. theological. They're actually saying something about God and the gospel. Yep. But it's not just a recitation of facts. No, there has to be some sort of uh, affection. Yeah. In the midst of it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's got to be expressive of one's faith and their love and, um, well, yeah, their faith and love in God and of God. Yeah. This is, I mean, you read the Psalms. Yeah. And it's like, it's very expressive. Um, and it's, it, it's very much like, you know, hey, I love you. You are my hope. Mm -hmm. And I think there are some people that like, there's there's a general truth that I that I, I've heard before and I've repeated myself and that is, you know, Reformation happens and you know these the hymns that are written are very much about God, but then you get you know a couple hundred years removed and the songs become a bit more about how we feel about God mm -hmm. and less about God and then you get a couple hundred years removed from that. And now it's just how we, about how we feel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and I think mm -hmm. that, that you could see some of that playing itself out, but at the same time, uh, both the Reformation hymns and scripture is about God. Like those songs, the good ones are about God, but it's also how about how we feel about God. It is about that too. Mm -hmm, like how, mm -hmm. uh, you know, our love for the Lord, our rejoicing in the Lord, our commitment to the Lord. I mean, you see all of these things in the Psalms. Yeah, It's yeah. not just about God, but it is about the response, you know, and that you know, for you to say it should, it should be an expression of affection, I think is important because we're saying that, uh, yeah, we're, we're not merely reciting a creed, which is a part of worship, uh, but we are, we're singing. Right, so singing specifically is to use the wrong word. Right, there's an emotional component mm, to it. Maybe mm -hmm. that's the wrong word. Uh, so well, I it can be good. taken the wrong way, right? Because yeah. a lot of the the bad worship songs are merely emotional, mm -hmm. right? They're emotional without truth. We're talking about emotion in truth. We're talking yeah. about being emotional in, in response to who God is and what He has done, right? Rather than yeah. in the for others for some songs, it's more just emotional for emotional sake. What is that? Um, there's that. There's a hymn. Oh, right. So, and uh, and I remember the first time I heard it. I was I was a student in seminary, and Jen and I went to this Southern Baptist church, and it, it, this there's a song. I hear the flutter of angels' wings. It, it, I mean, it's like, okay, that is emotionalism that is just like you mm. hear the flutter of angel we then it was it, the, that kind of a thing it happens in modern songs it happens yeah, yeah, in yeah. older songs but it's like th they create this they kind of paint a picture to arouse emotions but it's not affection which was the first word you used mm -hmm. that's grounded in what in god and what he's done it's 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 around an experience mm, yep and so like that's where i you know i think we get into some trouble um, when we start talking about emotions. So, okay, the content's got to be biblical, theological, which should express faith, right? Or yeah. love or affection. But then you, we're also looking at like like the form, the mm. content and then the form. And the form, we're here, we're talking about the music, the style. Um, and we've talked about this recently that there, you know, back in the day, early Baptists had to fight out, are we even going to have congregational singing? Forget music or not like are we going to sing together mm, or we're mm, just mm. going to have special talented people sing that was a debate that had to be had today we all agree congregations should be singing so what should the form of these songs take what's acceptable and i think um one of the things is is that whatever we're doing should be singable hmm. what do you mean what do you mean like uh if 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 it's only it's got a rhyme all the time uh a b a b I think by singable, we mean that it needs to be something that the average person in your church can sing, not something that only a skilled vocalist can sing. Mm. Uh, so if something is singable, that means it's relatively simple. 
it's a melody line that isn't confusing. Mm. It's not high pitched. Low, you know. Yeah. It's not too high or too low where people just can't do it. Um, I, I think if it's, if it's singable, it means, Oh, you know what? Kids, children can sing this. It's, it's something that is, uh, possible it's doable mm. it's not a performance that you watch it's something that you participate in so yeah i think whatever we're doing like since it's congregational in particular if it listen if it's a performance or if it's a special music or whatever then it doesn't have to be singable to everybody it just mm. has to be something that you can hear and listen to um you know i can't sing harry styles but I sing Harry Styles. You know what I'm saying? No. Like when I'm in my car and I put on some new Harry Styles. All right, let's pretend you're in the car right now. Okay, yeah. I'll okay, put on some old Harry Styles. Now. I go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. We're, we're in your car, mm -hmm. right? I'm driving. Driving. And, oh, Joe, why don't you turn the music up? That's all right. Yeah, we're good. No, no, go ahead. I don't need to put it on. No, 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 let's, okay, let's, that's fine. Yeah. It's, it's some Harry Styles. Go ahead. Let's yeah. hear. No, no. And watermelon sugar. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he can say I can listen to it, but he, he, his music isn't really singable for a guy like me. Um, and so, yeah, it's gotta be, it's gotta be, it's gotta be something you can actually sing. Mm, mm -hmm. Now, what about fitting to the subject, right? Like, yeah, I, I think of that in multiple ways, mm -hmm. but in, in one way, I think for us, we are, we don't just randomly pick songs yep. for, well, for worship and for the Lord's day. Yep. So it's the, not a grab bag. It's not a grab bag. Whatever the subject is, whatever the theme is, whatever mm -hmm. the main point is, everything that we do around that service for that day is pointing to that. Yeah. So the songs that are chosen for Sunday morning somehow are, um, I mean, they're, they're, they're talking about that. They're a reflection of that. If we're talking about the sovereignty of God, then we're, we're having worship songs that focus on the sovereignty of God. Yeah. And for us, that's just really important that... Like, for first of all, I mean, it's like every we have a liturgy. We have components that are always the same. Like the the the, the sections of our liturgy mm -hmm, are always the same. Mm -hmm. And so, sure, we're always going to be hitting on sin, grace, response of mm -hmm, gratitude. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But like Jimmy's saying, like we have very specific theological themes that change from week to week. And so that's that's something that we're like we choose those things very carefully. And, you know, another way of talking about this, like, for, so fitting to the subject, right? We can talk about that objectively, and then we can talk about it subjectively. Like, like the, the, the music or songs that we sing, or like, let me put it this way, the music that we choose for our songs should fit the, the vibe of the lyrics, right? So if you're singing mm. a song that is about confession and brokenness, it shouldn't sound like a happy, upbeat tune. It should have a more somber or sober tune. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, if it's a song of, of victory and rejoicing, well, then it should sound like a good time. It should sound positive. It should sound uh, triumphant. Positive, encouraging. K-love. Mm -hmm. um, whereas you, you wouldn't want it to be slow and in a minor key, probably, um, so it, but whatever it is, we're not making hard and fast rules, but there's a, these are subjective, right? Like this part is like, well, it, it, the, the music and melody should fit the subject of the material. And in fact, if you remember when we were looking at Benjamin Keach's hymn book and he has a song about like the sinfulness of sin and the corruption of the world, but the melody he has to it is like a super positive, upbeat melody that doesn't make any sense. Mm. It, doesn't, it just doesn't go. So I think, you know, that's, that's something that we talk about. But then we also, when we talk about the songs that we choose being culturally appropriate, right? Because, you know, what you might sing in our context might not work as well in in the deep South or vice versa or in, you know, just different neighborhoods and contexts. Like there are different cultures that respond to different kinds of music. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, there was, whether it's, uh, whether we're talking about like, well, this is going to be more of a hymn heavy context versus a more modern song context is somewhat determined culturally. Right. But it's, e I think it's easier if we talk about it like at, at the larger scale, um, when we plant churches in other countries, we don't necessarily export the historic, you know, uh, Anglo Western hymn books to go and sing in those contexts. Like there's, 
there's there's an, a there's a different culture and so like the the music that we want to sing we would want it to be biblical theological expressive of faith and love but also appropriate to that particular culture mm. I and mean, that makes sense yeah. you spent time in canada and in africa which mm. are very you know like uh, and what what countries in africa were you in uganda uganda okay so you canada and uganda uh a little bit different from each other yeah pretty different <laughs> a little bit pretty different don't pretty make different. too much of it jimmy I mean, yeah. come on Pretty different. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, what, like, how? I mean, that was actually what are the cultural differences because you can have biblical theological worship songs, but how mm-hmm. are they different? Well, I mean, just the like you saw, talked about there. Uh, uh, we were talking earlier about, I guess, the affections, right? Like, mm-hmm. there is a bit more of mm-hmm. expression, yeah. when it comes to uh, worship in Uganda. I mean, I, I got frustrated once. I was with a guy, uh, and this individual was known um as far as like christian music goes okay uh and he definitely imported a lot of north american Mm -hmm. music and it completely changed the ethos oh of the service it was so it was so weird it was so it was different Mm. it wasn't so like when you talk about that i've seen people do that yeah and it's it's frustrating um and I remember actually having to video it ah. and then showing, you know, uh, the pastor and saying, look, you need to see the difference here between uh, how worship is like when when you're doing worship mm-hmm. and when he's doing worship. Mm-hmm. It's quite it's quite different, you know. Uh, but, yeah, no, it, it's it's a lot more. I mean, there's a lot. There's a it, it, it's a different expression. Right. It's not right. Wrong. It's not yeah. better or worse. But you don't I mean, like that's part of the beauty of of the gospel and the church and Christianity is that um, it doesn't look the same from culture to culture. Like we make disciples in every culture. And so it's funny when you talk about Canada, right? Uh, and I, I was I was in Canada and the worship guy was, I kid you not, I kid you not. He did a mission trip, mm-hmm. came back and was like, all right, everyone, this is how you clap. And I'm like, I was just sitting there going cringe. Like, I was like, no, what are you doing? And he was definitely trying to, all right, guys, we're going to, I'm like, this is definitely like an older church, uh, older, like rural town kind of a thing. And he was definitely trying to import, yeah. you know, something else into the right. service. It's like, mm. it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. We all need to improve in our expressions of worship yep. it, 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 but in our expressions in and our fine. expressions yeah it's totally fine you know like uh, jen loves uh like we, we had uh, eric mason's church epiphany fellowship yep. lead worship at a acts 29 thing and that jen just loves that mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. her thing i get tired and i'm like a lot, of, a lot of standing and clapping uh <laughs> she loves it and it's but she also spent a lot of time in africa yeah yeah so um all right. Well, cool. So, all right. We, we, so we sing scriptures, we sing historical hymns, mm-hmm. we sing modern songs that fit all the criteria above. And I, we think variety is good, right? So yeah. some songs are really, really simple. Yeah. Like, so if you look at one song and it's like, uh, we exalt thee, it's, it's a worship hymn yeah. from the eighties, I think, or something, but uh worship song, I praise chorus. I think they used to call it. I still love, it. we don't sing it. I love it. Mm. And so you know, some of the Psalms are very repetitive and very yeah, simple yeah, and yeah. others are very complex. So yep. just because you look at one song and go, like, it doesn't really say much. Well, no, if that was the whole of worship, that would not work, but it's a part, right? So you want simple and complex. We like ancient and modern. Mm. Right, but here's the issue. We oh. do sing a Bethel song or two. And Ooh, uh, getting getting to it now. Not not an every uh, not an every week thing, but um, every the, day. The question is, uh, how do you justify singing Bethel? Um, or, and we have another question we'll get to at the end mm-hmm. of it's so bad. So, okay. So the objection is basically what, Jimmy? Like what, what is the. What, that Bethel is a heretical church. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, that we don't, we don't, we don't disagree with the, the, the heretical teachings that come out of Bethel. Yeah. Um, well, hold on. No, no. We disagree with them. We, we don't just, disagree we, that that they yeah. actually come, but we disagree with those teachings. Yes, yes, we absolutely do. Um, but our response is well, the song that we're singing itself isn't heretical. The song that we sing is orthodox, sound. Um, it reflects the truth of the gospel, and uh, because of this, we're okay singing it. 
Mm. And additionally, it, it, it's it's like we have the Wesleys had some nutty theology that we really disagree with, and um, we would not want those doctrines embraced in our church. Not just not just Wesleyan doctrines, but in particular, like John's under John Wesley's understandings of justification and things like that so uh but we sing his songs or his brother's songs or their songs because they the songs that we do sing are orthodox and good so i we just we don't think that uh the the origin or the the final like conclusion Mm -hmm. of an author determines the value of his or her uh, work, right? The, the the work can stand on its own, at least potentially. And uh, in this case, we're just, yeah, we're, uh, they, the song isn't heretical, so it meets the criteria above, yeah. so that's where we're but at. But what about the objection that people that were, are going to hear this Bethel song mm-hmm. and then be drawn into Bethel yeah. through that song? And I think that's actually a, a, a fair concern. Um, and this is why, like, I think some churches should should not sing Bethel. Mm. It's probably a good idea. Um, so for, for some churches, yes. Uh, if if there is the possibility, if this is a real thing, like, oh, okay. Like if they, there's a leaning. Yeah. Like, oh, they, they we, 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 our people are really into Bethel. We really sing it. Or they're, or they're not even just really into Bethel. They're, they're just immature. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons why it might. See, for us, we're confessional. We are Reformed Baptist, doctrinal preaching, uh, very clear on teaching. We're very careful with doctrine. We address heresy. Uh, our theological identity is so clear, that's not a thing. Mm. Like, they don't even, we sing some Bethel songs, but our people would not enjoy Bethel worship. They would not enjoy the big show. That's yeah. not what we do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we are very simple, old school, small band, loud congregation. Mm. That's what we do. Mm. So there, there really isn't uh, as much of of an opportunity for um, for our people to be led astray by one song a month that comes from this place because we openly carefully refute heretical false doctrines as we go through scripture. Mm. I mean, uh, I, I, it's, we, we sing, uh, Dustin Kensru. Yeah. And he seems to have, uh, well, I, I don't, I can't say for sure, but he's, he's definitely not believing what he used to believe when he wrote the, 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 the songs that we sing by. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't look good. Um, and I'm, we're, and I would be more concerned that they would go after him. I'm about to say that like, that one's more of a concern than, than because, Bethel for us. Because like, okay, because they really like the music. But again, because of our theological foundation and constant theological upkeep, our people are oriented against all that stuff. Mm. I, so I just don't, we just don't see that as a, in our context, it's not as, that's not an issue, but we don't see it as an issue. If we thought it was an issue, then we wouldn't do it. Oh, yeah. Correct. Correct. Now, I mean, churches have to decide what they do and don't sing, right? Like it's mm-hmm. it's 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 up to each church. And yeah. what we're saying is you want to make sure it's biblically and theologically sound yep. and it's appropriate for your context. Yeah. But then as Joe's talking about here, it's got to be good for your church. Yeah, it's not going to be the same at every church. No, I'm not mad at somebody when they's like, well, we would never sing that stuff because of X, Y and Z. Like, all right, that's great. Mm. It's good looking out. Good for looking out for your church. Well done. I'm not going to I'm not going to fault you for that. No. No, it's totally good. No. So, Joe. Yep. Oh, there's a question for you here. Why don't okay. we add on this? Yep. Oh, that's from, from Justin Opperman. Yep. Go ahead. He says, uh, honest, friendly question for you, Joe. Okay. First of all, if you have to say it's a friendly question, then you mean it as a hostile person. I know, you, I know you hate me, Justin. Uh, uh, no, Justin that's not true. I know. No, we've, right. we've hung out together. He's mm-hmm. come to the conference. He says, uh, you won't recommend reading Doug Wilson. You will recommend singing Bethel songs in public worship. Do you see any inconsistencies? Um, no. Uh, number one, I would say I am not recommending Bethel songs in corporate worship. We are choosing to sing Bethel songs yeah. in our corporate worship. That's number one. Number two, it's a matter of conscience and conviction, not prescription. So again, I'm not pushing for this with other people. But here's the main thing. Number three, it's ultimately about influence. Bethel as a church is not appealing to or influential to the people of our church. So their influence is a zero. There's just nothing mm. there. But uh, we would have much more in common with Doug Wilson. Uh, you know, he's he's, oh, he's yeah. reformed. Uh, he's 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 articulate. 
a simple church kind of a guy. Uh, no, I, I mean, I've read a number of his. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and I, I've, I've read a bunch of his books as well. So uh, he would be much more attractive as a writer or a figure because of that. And that's dangerous for me and my perspective because I his theological errors are significant. So um, I, I'll read Wilson and I'll, I'll have leaders read Wilson for something perhaps. But no, I'm not going to recommend uh, Wilson to the congregation at large because I wouldn't want them walking down that path. So uh, I wouldn't recommend uh, a, a Bethel concert to our people uh, because I don't think that would be good for them. But I think in context of worship, I think it's fine. But that's my basic answer. Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts. You can follow us online on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head to the website, DoctrineAndDevotion.com. There you can contact us. You can send up for the email blast of the store, JoeFoStore.com, and grab some gear. We got that fresh pot every Monday and Thursday. We got blog posts and video content over at that website. And we've got that all-access, exclusive, ad-free content. We've got that Bench Truth on Tuesdays, Weekday Wisdom, Monday through Friday to subscribe. You just go ahead on your podcast player, go down to the bottom there, and you can hit all access, subscribe to that, or you can go to doctrineanddevotion.com slash all access and sign up today. Later. Later.